This is not Boba Fett. This is not Kenobi. This is Star Wars. Greetings and welcome once again to Roman of the Empire. I am your host, Roman. Today we are going to be talking about Andor, Episode 12, Rick's Road. And before we get going, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the video today and definitely leave your thoughts in the comments. This was the season finale of Andor, Season 1. And... All the pieces came together at uh, Marvus, Marvus Funeral like we thought, but also not like we thought. A lot of things didn't interact the way I thought they would. Everything came together, but in a different, different kind of way than I was expecting. This was another, this was a good closer to uh, the season. And... I, I will say, before we dive into this thing, that you can tell they dumped a lot into this series. There was a lot of production. There was a lot of money that went into this to make it look as good as it did. Uh, but I will say that I don't think it needed to be as long as it was. You probably could have shaved off two episodes, maybe even three with just a lot of the slower pacing and things that didn't necessarily need to be there. Um, when the episodes took off and were really good, they were. And and I understood this, the putting the puzzle pieces together in the earlier parts and the character building and that stuff. But I did think that it took too long. And I think that's why a lot of uh, viewers were off put. And this, this series has terrible viewership which is unfortunate because it is actually a good series. And I have to throw the butt, but you have to give it the chance to get going. And a lot of viewers, after they got burned on Boba Fett and Kenobi, just weren't willing to do that, and I can't blame them for that. That is, that's on you, Disney Star Wars. You guys did this. You created the environment in which this show wasn't well-received. If this was the first thing you had released instead of the garbage products... Yeah, you, you probably would have gotten some solid viewership and the, the good reviews that this show deserves. But you you gave us The Mandalorian, which which raised the bar, and then you dropped that bar swiftly with Boba Fett and Kenobi. You, I mean, you made the bar get buried under the ground. And then you brought Andor on board, and it was just like, wow, thanks. Um... Because it's a good series, but you brought it on too late. And again, the pacing of the episodes, the earlier episodes specifically, probably put a lot of folks off. And they were like, oh, no, I'm not even going to bother with this. So if you haven't seen it, do give it a chance. Like I said, there you can you can jump forward, though. The first probably four or five episodes, you can get caught up in the the uh, replay. hate to say that, but you, you just you don't really need them. And as soon as you, you jump in the later episodes, you know what's going on and things are moving at, at a good pace. And that's, you know, where a lot of people need to come, you know, if they're, if they're going to watch the, the series at all. So that's where we are. You'll recall last week it was a lot of aftermath, the escape from the prison. Um, and we knew, and, and then of course the passing of uh, Marva, Cashin's adopted mother. And we knew these events were going to put a lot of things in place. <clears throat> Everyone's going to Ferrix uh, because they think Andor is going to be there. And, you know, that's the, at the end of the episode, he's on that um, whatever resort planet he was so he could retrieve his stuff and he makes the call back home. And lo and behold, yes, he's, he's, he finds out that she's dead and, of course, he's going to go home. Now, when we arrive at Ferrix this episode, it feels dark. The episode is pretty dark overall. Anyway, the series has been pretty dark. Let's not kid ourselves. But it's the it the air the air is heavy. You can feel the the uh, the Empire's presence in this episode. And uh, Deidre arrives um, on Ferrix, and 
Uh, we actually get to see, we see Bix earlier in the episode as well. She's still not doing great. Still, you know, she's suffering from the trauma of the, the torture, uh, the audio torture that the Empire um, did to her to try to gain information. We also see a character called Wilman, and you don't know his name. Remember Bix, or uh, Deidre took another person uh, on Ferrix to torture first before she got to Bix. Uh, that was Pack. And that was the father of Wilman. Well, Pax didn't survive. And remember, they hung his body in the in the town square as an example. So the young lad is kind of pissed off. And he is building a bomb. Huh. That's shocking. Shocking, I, I tell you. So now these things are coming together. The Imperials have set up, uh, let's call it a kill box. They, they've limited access, you know, Rick's Road is where the funeral is going to be. And so they've, they've given them access to that, uh, pulled back their patrols a bit, and they've limited it to 30 people. Limited it. Um, and so they're trying to catch Cashin, and they also want to identify who the man who they call Axis, which is Luthen, who they figure will probably be there, but or, or they're at least going to get Cashin so he can identify him. And Deidre makes it very clear that she needs to take Cashin alive so that they can do this. And so uh, Cashin's back, of course. We know he knew he was going to come back. And he's kind of just creeping around the underworld. He hops over into the backyard uh, in that, that fenced area in Bix's, uh, like, her, her shop area. Because uh, he doesn't know uh, anything that's happened. You know, he doesn't know she's been captured. One of the other guys comes out and he tells, you know, basically, he's, you know, sorry about your mom's death and says that Bix has been captured. And, but they also learn, Pikachu also learns where she is and he's not going to leave her there. He is not going to leave her there. So he's, especially, I think that's a lot of that has to do with his own uh, imprisonment. Aside from, I mean, his loyalties always seem pretty loose. I uh, hate to say it, but they do. Uh, but his own imprisonment may have given him more motivation to go get Bix than he might have had. Even though he, he might have had some, but that definitely would have pushed it over the edge for him. Um, and so he's off in his that ship that he works on in the that junkyard kind of place. We saw that in like episode one. And... He's reading uh, from the manifesto of Nemec. Nemec is the kid who got killed in the heist. He was the one who actually, I mean, he had some good ideas, some deep ideas about the revolution and freedoms. Um, even though he's very young, even though he was very young. So he has this manifesto and uh, Cassian's reading it. And you get a lot of just kind of some, some inspiration points for uh, Andor in this episode as to what pushes him forward. Because, I mean, let's face it, Andor himself isn't a very charismatic character. Um, we see him in Rogue One, and he just kind of pops in, and we don't really, you know, this is his background story. Even in Rogue One, he wasn't like... <laughs> He's not. He's not. A, he's not very cavalier. He's very. He's, he's very underplayed. He's very subdued, uh, but he does take action when he when he, you know it's required of him. So we listen to in in Nemec's voice from his manifesto. The imperial need for control is so desperate because it is so unnatural. Tyranny requires constant effort. It breaks. It leaks. Authority is brittle. Oppression is the mask of fear. The day will come when all of these skirmishes in battle, these moments of defiance, will have flooded the banks of the Empire's authority, and there, and, and there will be one too many. One single thing that breaks the siege. Remember this. Try. Inspiring. It's inspiring words for the, 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 the rebel to come that is Andor. So uh, Brasso is his big friend. You'll remember him from earlier episodes. Um, they meet up. He gives uh, Cash and basically a message from his his adopted mom before she died. Um, it basically when he pulls all his shit together, he's going to be an unstoppable force for good. Is what it all came down to for her. <clears throat> now the funeral is coming, and the locals kick it off early which is 
interesting because they had given them a time, the Empire, they gave the Empire time, then the Empire pushed that time to backs. So they're starting when they wanted to, which I don't know why the Empire is thrown off by this, but they are. And it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a, a dredge uh, of music and these musicians marching down the street with her brick. And it's a, it's a tense scene. The whole thing is tension building and it does a nice job with that. And you have actually Luthen on the sidelines watching this, as well as Kern. You'll remember him, of course, the the weasel who brought about the problem on Fairings to begin with, who's been trying to chase Andor and is obsessed with Deidre Miro in a weird way. So they're both there watching all of this. Uh, B, the, the droid, and um, Brasso are leading the procession. Everybody's chanting stone and sky, which, <clears throat> pardon me, is some obviously some pharynx thing. And then B projects an image of Marva. It's this giant holographic image of her giving a speech, uh, talking. She's wearing her robes of the daughters of pharynx, uh, pharynx. And she delivers a great speech, um, talking about how everyone's been sleeping and how the empire is a disease that thrives in the darkness and you know nothing is darker than when you're asleep and it's easy for the dead to tell you to fight um and the music is growing while she's saying all these words and she says perhaps it's too late but i'll tell you this if i could do it again i'd wake up early and be fighting these bastards from the start fight the empire and, of course, the Empire doesn't respond well to these inspiring words. Um, uh, one of the, the captains, uh, uh, the Imperial captains, goes over and tries to cover up B, the cover up the thing, and then just basically kicks him over. Well, you could feel the tension building, and, of course, this action by the Imperial just blows it all up, and the riot begins, and it's, it's full-on crazy town and Ferrix. Not surprising. And then uh, Wilman, the kid, throws his bomb. And it really lights it off, so to speak. And the captain orders the troops to open fire into the crowd. Now, we've seen a lot of Imperial firefights. And, you know, the stormtroopers usually come off as not very good at what they do. Well, this is a different scenario. They're just gunning down everyone. It's a, it's a, not a, not an easy scene necessarily to watch. This is, I mean, this is. I suppose the the uh, rebellion will remember this as the uh, the massacre uh, on Ferrix, or the slaughter on Ferrix, when these people were at the funeral were gunned down unarmed uh, by the Imperials, because the Imperials interfered with the funeral. You know, it's. It's it's a it's a messy scene, and a lot of people do die in this scene. It's like I said, this isn't the oh I missed stormtroopers. They are just they're shooting everyone. Uh, the 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 droid is pulled to safety. Thank God the droid survived. And Deidre Deidre is getting she's on the ground, and it looks like she's going to get ripped apart. Um, and then. She gets pulled out by, by someone with a gun, and it, you think she's being taken, but she's being rescued. It turns out it's our her, her good friend, Karn, uh, who she already yelled at for stalking her, but I guess it worked out in her favor. So they he rescues her. They have a moment. Um, Luthen just gets out of there as soon as everything breaks out because he realizes he's not going to... Because he came there to kill Cashin, you remember, the loose end. And uh, he's like, oh, this isn't good. And he's not taking a risk of getting captured. So he bugs the hell out of there. Uh, while all the whole riot thing's going on in the funeral, Cashin missed all this because he's trying to rescue Bix. And he does. Um, she's, it, it, it actually, that doesn't even take very long for him to do because the Empire is occupied. I mean, he used it to his advantage. I mean, he did the right thing. And so... It's uh, Brasso, the droid, and a couple other people are on this ship in that junkyard we talked about earlier. And he gets Bix and all of them off planet. He's like, go, go, go. But Cashin stays behind. 
in that goodbye scene, I don't know if we're going to see them again. I don't even know if there's going to be a season two because of the ratings. Um, it does seem like a very final kind of goodbye. It's not like a, I'll see you later. Although he, he says it, but I, I didn't buy it. I don't think they bought it either. It, it did have that finale to it. So they, they leave. And now we're back with Mon Mothma, who we haven't really seen in this episode. Uh, she is, uh, they're coming from a party, it looks like. Uh, she's waiting in, in the vehicle, and Perrin, her feckless husband, gets in. And she starts yelling at him about, I know you've been gambling again. I don't know where you're getting the money. And she tells the driver to put the, uh, the thing on silent. Of course, the driver is a spy for the Empire, so he has his own little switch so he can listen anyway. And she's basically admonishing Perrin about the money. And he's kind of blindsided by this. He's like, I'm not gambling. I don't know what you're talking about. Which <clears throat> is kind of a, you know, a, a denial that would happen anyway. And uh, he's like, well, you know, and, and, and Mon's like, well, I, don't even, I don't even want to know where you're getting the money, knowing the driver is listening to this. Hmm. This is a way for her to, to try to cover up her, you know, where is the money going? And remember, she's financing the Empire, and the Empire is looking at the, the financial dealings. Well, um, the Empire buys that, which is good. But she still has, I mean, it's probably more than she can account for necessarily through parents gambling. And we go back to uh, Deidre is on her phone, on the phone, <laughs> on a communication with Major Partagas. Remember, the, he's the, the head of the ISB. And talking about the Krieger capture. Remember, Anton Krieger was... They, they set up the, the ploy of the rebel ship and Krieger was going to go in on this run and Luthen knew that this was going to happen and he let the Empire do it anyway so they could get their victory to try to get them off their back for a little bit. And Deidre's pissed because she wanted Krieger alive so they could question him. But Partagas is, is like, um, Today was about wiping Andali from the Emperor's mouth. Basically, he's trying to get the Emperor off his back, too. Look, we did something. Look, we did something. And he's like, now find me Axis. Okay. Now, and then we were shift back to Mon Mothma. And remember uh, the whole thing with Davo and his son meeting her daughter? Well, now we are at that introduction scene. They marry very early. They marry about age 15, and it's tradition for the young man to meet the, the young girl. And now we have the mixing of these two families. It's, and it's, it is like sell, she's like selling her daughter to get Davos help. It's, it's unsavory. This is an unsavory business, though, Rebellion. We talked about that before. It's not clean and shiny. And the greater good is often served by a lot of lesser evils, and sometimes pretty big evils. And this is obviously one of those. And now we're at the, the final scene of this series. Remember, Luthen ran off. He went back to his ship. And uh, we cast didn't go with the other people. He went to Luthen's ship because he figured Luthen would be there. And he knows where he parks because that's where they were last time. And Luthen finds him there. And he's like, what game is this? And uh, Cass is like, no game. He's like, you want to kill me? Kill me. But otherwise, take me in. He wants to join the rebellion. He wants to join the rebellion in earnest. I think not in small part because of his you know, incident on the prison. And you know, he knew what was happening. And now, of course, everything that's happened on uh, Ferrix have driven him from a keep my head down and make trouble where I can to I am a rebel. And now he is full on a rebel. There is no, no walking the line anymore. He has crossed it and he's staying there. All right. And we see the results in Rogue One, which I very much enjoy. So I'm going to go to a major spoiler now instead of all the other spoilers that we talked about. So if you don't want to know like the secret end of the show, now is the time to tune out. But uh, so here we go. Here we go. Remember what Cashian and his friends were building components in their forced labor 
uh, cell prison place? Well, funny, what could they have been building those parts for? Oh, that's right. It's the freaking Death Star. The thing that ultimately kills Cass and a whole bunch of other people, but, uh, man, it was a really cool post credit scene. So, worth watching. Worth watching. The, the series is worth watching, like I said. If you don't want to deal with the slower episodes, jump ahead. You'll be okay. But it was a, it was a, it was a good show. And I'm, I'm, uh, it's unfortunate that Disney did all the other crap they did so that you're not getting to see this series. Or a lot of people aren't getting to see this series. Anyway, and like I said, we may not even get a season two because the reception has been... I don't want to say bad. It's been non-existent, though. Um, Flaccid Phoenix is one of the other people that I know who are reviewing the show, but not a lot of people are even bothering. Just because, like I said, reception has been bad because they dumped Boba Fett and Kenobi on you. And they wrecked it. They should have released this first. Or even after Mandalorian would have been fine. Uh, but they saved it, and they're paying the price. So who knows? Who knows what we're going to get next, if we're going to get anything. If not, this was a good conclusion. Um, the Death Star ending does work uh, going into Rogue One. So I, I see it. You don't necessarily need a season two. It's okay. Um, you can end here, and it's fine. And you got a, you got a good series. And it didn't, you know, like I said, pacing, but whatever. Uh, so that's it for this one. I think the next thing that we're going to be reviewing here on the Of the Empire channel is... Willow, which starts in a couple days. We'll see how far we get into that. Hopefully we can actually do a full series review and not just a couple episodes and tear our eyes out of our skull. Yeah, who knows? For now, this has been Roman of the Empire signing off. Please like and subscribe as it really does help the channel and we get to do these fun reviews and you guys get to go, yeah, I agree with him or he is out of his freaking mind. I hate this guy. I'm going to make some comments and I'm going to like his channel anyway. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Be kind.